Hello, we're now going to go through four what we call network topologies. Thankfully, this is not the hardest topic, in my opinion. We've covered harder stuff on networking. The main thing is you are able to picture these networks in your head, but also have a couple of evaluation points in mind going into any exam. So, first of all, the word topology is a word we don't come across very often in normal English. In networking, this word refers to the arrangement of the devices and connections in a network. So how are we actually physically arranging and sometimes logically arranging these devices? We've covered different types of networks before, things like client-server, peer-to-peer, but this is about how you actually are laying out the network in reality. So the first one is a star topology. A star topology, as the name would kind of suggest, is where we have it roughly resembling a star. Now, the pictures I'm gonna show you are just pictures. They're what we call diagrammatic representations. In reality, it's not gonna be a perfect star looking like this, but the point is, in a star topology, each device will transfer data through a central device. So every device, apart from our central one, connects to this central point with a wire, or it could be wirelessly. Star topologies are quite common in home networks for Wi-Fi, right? Because that middle device could be anything really. It could be a hub, it could be a switch, it could be a router or a wireless access point. So it doesn't matter what it is, either wired or wireless, but all data is going through that central point. Right, okay, the next step is to evaluate these topologies. So first of all, with a star topology, if one cable or one outer device fails, it breaks, it goes down, then other devices will be unaffected. Right, if we can picture, say, this bottom computer breaking or the wire going to that bottom computer breaking, it won't affect the rest of your network. But also because cables are not being shared, there is less chance of data collisions. A data collision, a bit like a car crash, not a very nice picture, but if you picture a car crash, if you've got multiple messages going down the same wire in opposite directions, they can collide. So in reality, all that means is you get an error and you have to resend the data. So a busy cable will have collisions and that will slow things down because things have to get resent. Now, you might get collisions, but because you've got a direct connection, in a wide network at least, it will collide less frequently. So these are generally quite high performing, quite fast networks. But that only really applies to wired networks. Now, also, because you've only got one cable going to each device, this is easy to add new devices. There's not a lot of fuss. All you do is plug it in to the central device or connect wirelessly. But they're not all perfect, of course. Because you've got lots of stuff involved, they are quite expensive to install. You've got quite a lot of cables. Each device has its own cable, effectively, and you've got to buy that central device. Something like a proper industrial switch can be thousands of pounds. So that's not a low cost. And if you cheap out and buy a very bad switch or a cheap hub, that may well slow down the network. So you are reliant on your middle device being good. Right, I'm sure we've all come across routers which are really slow and the whole network gets slow. You are very reliant on that central device, especially if that central device doesn't work. If it stops working, if it breaks, then the whole network will go down. So we are very reliant on the central device. The second topology we're going to cover has no central device, but it does have a central cable. So bus topology is where we have every device connected to one cable called the bus. So bus in computing is another word for a cable, right? It's not a, a London bus, although it is still of transport, I guess you could say. Now here we've got one big bus in the middle. Each device has a small connection to the big highway almost. Now, the way this works is each message being sent will travel along the bus. Now, at either end, you've got something called a terminator. The terminator stops it bouncing back and forth. The terminator absorbs the message because let's say this top right computer was printing something. The message would go in, go down the bus, go to the printer, but it would keep bouncing back and forth unless we had a terminator to absorb the message. Now, crucially, 
that computer sending that message goes to the printer but ultimately every computer can see the message because all devices see the messages but only the intended device actually accepts and processes the message. So the printer will only actually deal with it but every computer could also see the message. So it's very shared which you can probably think of a limitation of that. But first of all some benefits. Well less cable is needed. You might not think that but actually if you've got one big cable all you need is a fairly small set of connectors and crucially no specialized device needed. There's no hub, there's no switch, it's cheaper in that regard. And also simple to set up no specialist device to configure you just plug it in and it should work likewise it should be easy to add new devices all you do is plug in a cable to that main wire so bus topologies are always wired there is no wireless option really but like a star topology we are really reliant on that central aspect here the bus is what our central aspect is if a bus goes down then the whole network also goes down. The bus is essential. And so, when the bus gets busy, there will be more and more collisions, which means the performance goes down. If you've got data colliding and getting errors, you've got to resend it, which slows down the whole network. But you could argue the worst issue, which I was alluding to, is security. Because all devices receive all the packets, they're public almost, that becomes a security issue because if they're not encrypted, any computer in the network could see every message. Our third topology is a mesh topology, which does give us a clue as to what it looks like. A bus topology, you might just think of an actual bus, but mesh, like mesh clothing, mesh fencing, we've got kind of a grid crisscrossing. That is what a mesh topology looks like, kind of. I mean, again, all these pictures are just representing. In reality, it won't look so perfect. In a mesh topology, every device is connected to every other device. So if you see in this picture, we've only got six devices, but we've got loads of wires, because if you look closely, every device is connected to every other device. And in reality, that isn't always particularly common. So often you'll see what we call a partial mesh, Doing a full mesh can be a bit much, but you can still connect some of your devices directly with a partial mesh. So here you can see, you know, we've not got full connections. We have got a couple of connections which are doubled up. It's a little bit more fully connected, but not quite every single device connected to every single other device. So I guess I'm showing you that because if you see something like this, it's not a full mesh, but it is still technically a mesh topology despite not being perfect. Now in terms of benefits, mesh is pretty good um, in terms of, well, if one cable goes down, you've got plenty of backup routes. Kind of a whole point here is to have backups. If one or more cables goes down, you've got plenty of backups. You can go via other computers. There are plenty of alternative routes to get through. And because you've got a direct connection, you've got a a fast option, right? Something like a bus, something like a star, you've got to go through other wires, other devices, a mesh goes direct to the intended device. So it's a little bit faster. And because it's direct, fewer collisions will occur. It's just less likely each cable will be far less busy than say a bus network. But the reason my mesh is not used very often in real life is because it's very expensive and potentially in big networks, very difficult to install. If you can imagine having to connect up every single device in a classroom, for example, to each other, that would be really tough. If you're getting to hundreds of devices, it just becomes almost impossible, especially when you want to add a new device. To add another device, you've got to connect that device to every other connection, which in a big network is just not really possible. So mesh might be used if you've got only a few computers, more than say five, it just becomes a bit too problematic. Okay, and our final topology is a ring topology, which again, helpfully gives us a very clear idea of what it looks like, if you can picture it. So in a ring topology, 
each device is connected to two other devices again like mesh and like bus this will be for wired networks only so we've got a nice ring formed again in reality it won't look like a perfect circle it might be you know zigzagging around a building or around a floor but it will still be if you pictured it from above it would look like a ring almost so the point of this network is messages will move in one direction around the network so it's a one-way system you've got to go via other devices so let's say in a standard ring network let's say this top workstation was you know accessing this server the message would have to go through the other devices going round up to the server if that was going um, clockwise if it was anti-clockwise it would just go the other way around but it's got to go one way around it can't skip devices it's got to just pass through devices on the route and there is a particular type of ring topology you've got to know about which is not used very much anymore but used to be used quite a lot in business networks this is called a token ring network in a token ring there will be a message passed around called a token and a token is just a big message which is pretty much blank okay and a token is constantly going around the network in one direction always passing around never stopping when a device wants to communicate what it will do is add a message to the token so the token goes around it's blank when a device wants to send a message it adds it to the token and so pass around adding more messages as it goes now when the message gets to its intended recipient the message will get removed from the token so the token will just have messages being added messages being removed as it goes through the network the idea of a token is to reduce collisions if you've got one token controlling this whole process there is no risk of anything bad happening it's a bit like a train you know the train picks up passengers the train drops off passengers the token always goes round when it's needed stuff gets added to it stuff gets removed from it so let's evaluate this final one so ring quite simple no specialist device is needed and as I say simple to set up and understand and there should be no collisions if you are using a token only the token is being sent and so there should be no collisions in theory so it does perform quite well although if it's quite big you've got to travel all the way around potentially the key limitation is it's very vulnerable to issues if one connection breaks then potentially the whole network may not be able to communicate if you're using a ring to put if you're using a token ring then it one connection breaking ruins the whole network in a normal ring network it might work for a little bit but it wouldn't work fully but also because you're going via devices you're passing messages through other devices it will mean some devices will view messages not meant for them which like a bus topology is a security issue and finally it is quite hard once it's set up to add new devices especially if you're using a token ring network you've got to shut down the network to allow it to plug in a new device if you disconnect it when it's working no device will be able to communicate it will really cause issues so it's not very flexible once it is set up